Welcome back to a new episode here in Friday. This week was a bunch of titles and stuff. So today is gonna be a long shadow text and how you do this effect here in DaVinci Resolve. I do this, I chose to do this because I feel that it, this sort of like shadow has become a little bit popular in the past year, year and a half maybe. There's a bunch of people using it. So, and I was like, well, maybe I can find a way to do it in here in DaVinci Resolve. So let me just show you right away. You already saw the animation in the intro. So let's get into the fusion tab. Okay, here in Fusion, uh, this is what it looks like. I have a bunch of stuff here because stuff that I tested and there's like different ways of doing this. You'll see this one is a little bit more, I'll say not as clean because if you zoom in, you'll see these pixels right here and that's because there's like a ton of duplicates. So yeah, but first of all, so I'm gonna do this and maybe I'll do another video where I show out the I guess you would call it the harder version and more smoother because that one will take time, more time and it will, you will have to mask out a bunch of stuff, right? So, okay, first of all, let's just go back, let's just go up here, we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna, let's, let's go and create a new fusion composition actually, just so we, so we don't mess this one up, okay? Let's go into that one, alright. Okay, so then the first thing that we want to do is you want to add the background node and you can add a gradient if you want, how I did it early in that one. We can change the colors on this one if you want. Let's do, what is this? Let's see. And when you do a gradient, you got to make sure that the colors are not that different. The more different they are, the more like lines like these you're going to get. So that's what you want to make sure to pay a little bit of attention when you're trying to do like here for example it works a little bit better it's a bit smooth i guess like that okay we're gonna add that and then the first thing we want to do is we're gonna add one merge node we're gonna select the text node and bring it here and i use the text we're gonna write suave or let's just write text for this one i think the font that i use i don't i don't think it's a uh, the, like a font that comes in your computer already that it comes but it, I think it's called EXO 2.0 and I think you can get it on what is it called 1001fonts.com or .org I think one of those and I use you can use whichever you want I use this black one which is the boldest one in this list that it shows here okay we have these and if you want you can increase a little bit of the tracking also but that's up to you. We're just going to leave it at default actually. Okay. Then after you have your text, what you want to do is you're going to copy these text. If you do have an animation in stuff already, you can just do the animation right now. So let's do that animation actually. So we're going to create a keyframe for the position. So we're going to go here and create the keyframe. And then we're going to go, let's say frame 16, create another keyframe, go back. And then we're going to bring this one. In this case, it's going to be coming from the top from the sky we're gonna go to the spline tool we're gonna select everything press f make it a little bit smooth we can press t to adjust the ease in and ease out of our animation and that is what it will look like it looks pretty slick i guess okay then that way we don't have to reanimate the other one that we have okay we're gonna go here and copy and paste that we are gonna connect it to the background so that automatically creates a new merge node on this merge node what we want to do is we're gonna bring it a little bit higher and this one is gonna be a different color so it's gonna be this sort of like the shadow so it's gonna be you can make it fully black and then adjust the opacity of it which is what I did so we're gonna go here to the shading section and here you adjust the opacity we can put 0.75 maybe and right now we're not seeing it but if you move this a little bit you're gonna see how it looks okay then we're gonna add a duplicate and to open the selection tool you press ctrl m or shift m and then you do that and that's how you open that selection tab then what you want to do is you're gonna add a bunch of copies and i think i did 50 yeah it looks it looks like a lot so if you animate this it might take a big toll on your computer so that's why i do the the animation with a mask i will show you in a second but yeah so then what you want to do is you can adjust this position here and I hold control so that you're able to more carefully uh, control where the 
uh, where the shadows and duplications go. You see how here it shows all the pixels and the way to fix this is to adjust these points right here and try to find the place where um, there's less of them. So you get if it's showing too many pixels, you can maybe add a hundred and then that allows you to give you, it gives a little bit more freedom to like find the right position for your shadow, right? And it still looks a little bit too pixelated. Let me see, whoops, that's not the angle. I think we might be able to solve this. This is a, was not part of the tutorial, but I think if we add a blur to these, we might be able to sort of like fix that smoothness on it a little bit. Let's see. You can find the right blur. So I just opened and found a blur section and we can hold control. So we make the blur be just a little bit so that until the point that it covers our pixels and it's still going to look a little bit weird but it does look good. We can change the color of this text actually too and change the shadow. Um, with this blur, it might not look as clean, I guess, but since we are playing with the opacity, I think that allows us, allow us, allows us to have the blur be a little bit, it adds a certain touch to it, I'd say, right? And you can also adjust the blending mode here in the merge node to like add, it's a, a few shades, I guess, of the, it's sort of like the opacity section here too. Okay, so that's pretty much how you would go about that, adding that bl that shadow or that long shadow. If you don't want the blur, you will just have to add more shadows and tweak the positioning of it a little, little by little until the point that you get uh, only a few of these, right? And okay, so we're gonna add this blur again because I really I liked how it turned out. It adds a bit of effect, I guess. And then what we want to do is you're gonna go to the merge node and we're gonna create a square mask or a, actually a rectangle. We're gonna adjust the size of it. We're just press gonna add one and one. That's gonna make it go the full resolution of your um, timeline. If your timeline is a 10, uh, 720, this is gonna be 720. Like if you open that project on Fusion, it's gonna be 720. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I did was I animated this rectangle so that a shot, so the shadow comes sort of like from that side. So let's go back to our text and see where the last keyframe was 16. So we're gonna start at 20 and we're gonna go to a rectangle. We're gonna create the keyframe on the position. And then we're gonna go to 10 frames, so 30, make it clean like that, okay? And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna adjust this X value. It's gonna be minus 0.5, which is gonna make it go right to the side. And then this one is gonna be 1.5, which is gonna make it go up. So it's gonna be coming straight from that side. That way we don't have to guess and try to align it uh, by, like just by eye, I guess. We're gonna go back and add motion blur to it and then we can decrease the shutter angle. You can leave it up like that if you want, if you like a lot more blur. But if we press play, we will see that the shadow sort of comes out like that, right? So one thing we need to do still is we're gonna go to our spline tool and then we're gonna select everything, pressing control A, and then we're gonna press F. And then you can play with the T ease in and ease out. If you don't see this section, make sure you press T when everything is selected and that will drop down this little menu. And then let's see how this one looks. And that's how it looks. And that is pretty much how you go about obtaining or getting this long shadow effect. Add the blur if you want it to be a little bit like blurry, I guess. But yeah, if you want it to be not with, if you don't like the blur, make sure that you have the duplicate, uh, try adding more duplicates and then adjusting the position of it. And if you want to animate, you can also animate these, but just remember that if you do animate these duplicate node, and it might take a little bit longer to render. So yeah, that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you find it helpful, that you can use it maybe sometime in your videos. And if you do, let me know and comment down below and tag us and so we can check your video out. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video once again, and I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave.